Hello everyone. Welcome to this video demonstrating how to get started with iFix and the Industrial Gateway Server or IGS. Leading up to this step, you would have installed IGS and iFix on the same node or server. And in this demo, we have preloaded the IGS with an existing configuration which can be seen here if you go to the icon in the tray and open the configuration for IGS. You can see that we have configured a PLC and some fillers and mixers uh, to demonstrate communications through IGS uh, and iFix. So to get started, when you open your iFix project, the first thing you'll need to do is go into your SCU, configure the SCADA, and add the IGS driver that is installed uh, with iFix when installing IGS on the same node as iFix. You'll need to install IGS after iFix so that that driver can be correctly installed. Once it is, it appears in the drivers available list and you can go ahead and add it to your project. We'll save that and we'll go ahead and start iFix. As iFix Workspace starts up, let's go now and <clears throat> bring some of those IGS points into this iFix database so that we can uh, configure them and view their values on a screen. So for this uh, demo, we're going to use Configuration Hub. We'll open up and this allows us to browse the IGS configuration and pull in points directly. So as the configuration comes up, we go to the Connections tab, and we go to the IGS tab, and you'll see that right now there's no, it doesn't show IGS configured as a channel, or channels and devices not available. The reason for that is the very first time you come in to using IGS with uh, iFix, you'll need to not only include IGS in the SCU, but you'll have to enable the configuration API service from the settings in IGS. So to do that, you go to your Windows tray, select the industrial gateway, OPC, um, gateway server, go to the settings, and in the configuration API service, you'll want to enable that service as well as enable HTTP should be set to yes. As you do that, then come back here and browse you can see that now we've made that connection and are able to browse our IGS configuration and see all of those points that have been configured in IGS to communicate with that PLC. So for the purposes of this demo, we're going to bring in all of the points for Mixer 1 in this configuration. To do that, we select Mixer 1, hit Create Tags, and we can select all the tags that we want to be created we can modify their names by removing some of the, the hierarchical levels from the tag groups and potentially even put a prefix on it. So we'll call it demo underscore mixer one <clears throat> and then all of the mixer values are there. So we'll go ahead and create those tags. You can see they're created. And then what we want to do since we're working from configuration hub is now publish all of those new tags into the iFix running database. Now that the publish is finished, we can go right back to the iFix workspace and start uh, building our HMI off of that database. So if I go in, for example, and go to our high performance tanks, uh, let's do the animated ones. If I drop one of those tanks onto the screen and I browse that database, you'll see that I've got my mixers in here, and I'll go the I'll pick the tank level. Close the dynamo sets. And uh, we'll just go straight ahead and try out this uh, save that picture, try out the picture, and you can see right away we've got data going, talking to that IGS server. Now just as a reference, you can see that if we go into our previous database manager, 
can see those points obviously show up here. And uh, if you look at the point, you can see that by browsing and creating, we've automatically brought in and filled in the I.O. address and uh, so that that automatically works. Also, as a note to uh, seasoned uh, IGS users, you can also, we also support uh, dynamic addressing from the IGS. So you would just reference your channel and device, and then you could go ahead and put in your direct addresses to your PLC addresses, and that works as well. Thanks for watching.